So we have the Royal Enfield Gorilla. I'm going to take it out for a quick run. Gold stars over there. Display in front of you. Very clear. Very, very clear. So one bike, and I've got to be quite careful with pretty good height. But I can get to the side stand. So usual. And we are in first. Controls are very easy to hand, as the old saying goes. Very wide flat tank. Didn't really like this colour scheme. Um, display, very straightforward. There we go. I found a clutch bike point. And, ooh, steering is uh, very sharp. Alright. Oops. Not uh, quite sharp on the rear. I've tried the front yet. So once I got out of the dealership, I headed straight for the open road and our own major dual carriageway in Cornwall, the A30, where I wanted to test the bike's open road performance, where I found it to be a responsive machine and, uh, as you'll see shortly, um, dealt very effectively with the slow-moving vehicle, getting from 60 to 70 on uh, the throttle very quickly with no lag and I didn't need to change down. So the, the uh, mirrors worked well and power delivery was linear without being talky at the bottom end or falling off too much at the top end either. So let's do the walk round. And there she is. Compact, very black, not very much in the way of chrome highlights, orange and black and purple paint scheme, which is the only thing I really don't like about this bike. Everything else, pretty good. The brakes are sharp. And what I can see, bear in mind, this is still quite a low mileage monoshock at the back. So let's put the display on. So it comes up with the Gorilla moniker and then sweeps around. We've got fuel engine warning light, ABS side stand. Very important, that one. And it's clear and it's bright and it's straightforward. We do have a mode switch. We have hazard warning switch. So let's stand at the front. So at the front, single LED headlight. We've got a radiator, so this is a water-cooled bike. Blacked out engine. A quick glance at the spec sheet shows the standout features for me being the weight of only 184 kilograms, 56 less than the Super Meteor, and the seat height at only 780 millimeters, making this a very accessible bike indeed. It's all looks compact, but of course there's a big big cat underneath and uh, let's do the startup sequence so we've got the that's interesting the uh, rear light are also the indicators now that is pretty cool i think so yes some really clever little design touches the no, unadjustable levers which is a shame but the uh, brake lever is in a position where I can manage it easily. So to start up, you just go to start and then it's all the way around. It sets down to tick over, which is roughly about 15, 1600, maybe 1400. Mode button. So we've got performance or eco. Okay. Well, let's leave it with eco for a minute and then I'll change back to performance so we've got all the usual horn sounds loud enough so we've got the joystick which controls all the various modes so push to select so with my left hand I'm moving the joystick and then if you want to the individual setting you just press it uh, and at the moment we've got outside temperature which is 62 Fahrenheit presumably you can change it to uh, centigrade so yeah that's something I think you can spend a lot of time fiddling with as as ever with these but uh, I don't know how you uh, change all the other things let's go back to Odo and then I guess if you press the mode button you go back to that so we're still on eco ABS on golden line right let me do your slow so foot rests 
quite compact gear change, also quite compact. I guess you could move them forwards or back, change drive, of course. All the bits and bobs, all the tubes, pipes, cables are pretty neat, which is good, because some bikes these days are very loose. There's lots of things going all over the place. Exhaust, that's the exhaust note. See if I can give you a bit of a... Pretty innocuous, but pleasant. Pillion footrests are hard. As I said, the seat feels comfortable. We've got a flip top um, fuel cap, a little belly pan underneath. My bike, single disc, by Bray brakes, LED headlights. Let's get on and ride this little puppy a bit more. So, the home button on the front, which I'll show you. That brings you back to the main menu and then the joystick. You can scroll up and down to turn the hazards off. Trip preference, my vehicle system, information, favourites. I'm not going to make any more changes. That's for a full review. This is, as I said, just a riding impressions. But, oh my goodness, a simple bike to get on with. I want one, I want one. The clutch bike point is quite well out on this, and I think, as with my stumpy fingers, I would want to have adjustable levers just for the convenience of putting it. Yeah, it doesn't like it below 2000. We're changing here, so just over two, you've got to be over 2000. Ask the Krispy Kreme donut stand. Takes a little while to get used to that clutch by point. As I left the service area, I decided rather than go straight for the A and B roads on the way back to uh, Damerals, I would take a detour via the local village just to give it an idea of what it's like on sort of more um, built up uh, situations where the roads are a bit uneven. So the bike dealt well with that. I found it to be smooth, responsive and easily trickleable around the uh, roads. It's narrow, so ideal for filtering. And the suspension, although it's probably a bit basic, dealt well enough with the uneven road surfaces, which is uh, currently in the middle of a big road building program. And overall, no real vices. Now, I really didn't get to test the bike in stop start conditions too much, um, but as this little example shows, the bike pulls away very cleanly and smoothly from traffic lights, so I'm sure it'll hold its own with a plomb in that urban Grand Prix that is going to be its uh, natural habitat. For AMB road situations, the bike has adequate power, is agile in the twisties, sharp steering, is lightweight, with a slick gear change, I got no false neutrals. Uh, above all, for me, as a shorter rider, easy access to the side stand. Benefits for the newer rider, older rider, or shorter rider, it's light and easy to control, has easy access to the side stand, as already mentioned, and generally, if Captain Clumsy can do it, anyone can. Let's pull up next to the gun star of every place. Ew. Lovely. Nice and now. It's nice and easy. Solid. So a bit of side by side comparison. There you are. The gorilla and the gold star. So to sum up, here are the list of the pros and cons of this bike. First, pros, so it's the looks, the performance, the price point, features, centre stand, dealer network and weight. Now for cons, so for me those are the paint schemes at the Royal Enfield website, uh, there is some vibration through the foot pegs and a little bit of lack of character compared to my gold star. Next, final conclusions, but before that can I just remind you to like, comment and subscribe to help this channel grow. So final conclusions, this is an ideal urban warrior or weekend blockster, will suit a wide range of people from newly qualified to older riders. 
and what I haven't tested on this video is the fuel consumption, the top speed, the configurability and how it performs in adverse conditions, durability and long distance comfort. More on that in another video but for now I've been Andy or Captain Clumsy, thanks for watching and bye for now, see you in the next one.